Hello, everyone, uh, and welcome to today's webinar on Azure Active Directory. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to the folks joining from different parts of the globe. My name is Nur Basha, Marketing Director at Mumbai Technologies, and I'll be your moderator for today's webinar. So as you know, today's uh, topic is securing your cloud environment with Azure Active Directory. So in the next 30 minutes, we will learn how uh, Azure AD uh, identity protection, identity management will help secure your applications as well as the cloud environment. So before we jump on to the session, let me highlight few housekeeping items. Uh, during the webinar, uh, please feel free to post questions and we'll try to answer as many as we can at the end. And we are recording this session. We'll be sharing the presentation as well as uh, the recording to you in next 24 to 48 hours. So with that, let me take this opportunity to introduce you to today's session speaker, uh, Jeff Gelman, who is the VP of Technology Solutions at Winvar Technologies. Uh, Jeff brings close to 31 years of IT industry experience, and he's a Microsoft certified Azure solution expert. He's also a Microsoft uh, PC, PSC, CSA, and also a author for SharePoint 2013 Disaster Recovery Guide. Jeff also specializes in designing and deploying on-prem as well as hybrid solutions using Azure, Office 365, and SharePoint. So with that, let me hand it over to Jeff uh, so that he can walk us through uh, how Azure AD helps really in securing the cloud environment uh, with quick a couple of demo, demos as well. Jeff, over to you. Thanks, Noor. Uh, my pleasure to be here. Uh, as Nora said, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everybody joining us from different parts of the world. Um, as Nora said, he's you know gone through uh, a little bit about me. Uh, my LinkedIn and my Twitter are there. Feel free to uh, reach out to me uh, via uh, both of those if you choose. Um, and with that said, let's move on to our agenda. Uh, we'll start off with just a, a little basic uh, Azure Active Directory overview and then really move into the meat of it and talk about Azure ID, I, uh, AD Identity Protection and Azure AD Conditional Access. And then we'll leave some time at the end there for some uh, Q&A. So uh, from an Azure AD overview perspective, what, what is Azure Active Directory? First off, let me just say that Azure Active Directory is not Azure Active, uh, Active Directory domain services running on a virtual machine in Azure. It is not, it is actually a, its own service. It's a fully managed multi-tenant service that Microsoft offers for identity and access capabilities for, act, uh, for applications that run in Microsoft Azure and for applications running on-premises. Um, you know, it, it, and so forth. So just you know, understand that uh, Azure AD is different than Azure, uh, than Active Directory domain services. Uh, and what it helps uh, do, it helps you know, uh, access external resources such as Office 365, the Azure portal, uh, SaaS applications and so forth, as well as internal resources such as you know, applications that are running internally on your corporate network. Uh, and internet and, and any cloud apps that you have access to uh, as well. So Azure Active Directory in the marketplace, it is one of the, the most used services by Microsoft. And the reason for that is every Office 365 and Microsoft Azure customer uses Azure Active, uh, Active Directory. You can see the statistics here, uh, quite, a, quite a number of identities, over a billion identities, uh, a, a, exist in Azure Active Directory, a lot of third-party apps. And, and you know, the last one over there is pretty important that uh, over 90% of the Fortune 500 companies are using Azure Active Directory. So it is uh, out there, it's a proven uh, technology uh, being used again by many, many, many people. And what we're gonna do is kind of dive into some of the, the different aspects of Azure Active Directory and how you can utilize that to help secure your environment. A little bit about the Azure Active Directory licensing. Uh, for those of you who get uh, um, Office 365 uh, and so forth, you, you're going to get the kind of out of the box, the, the, the lowest level of, um, depending upon your subscription, the lowest level of Azure Active Directory. And you've got a free version of Azure, Azure Active Directory. It provides just basic user and group management. 
um, you know, the on-premises directory synchronization, some basic reports and so forth, as well as the, the Azure AD uh, basic, which provides some basic you know, cloud-centric app access, some group-based access management, um, and, and self-service password reset for you know, various cloud apps and so forth. Um, and then there's premium versions of Azure Active Directory, and depending upon the licensing that you have, uh, you can get you know, the premium version. Um, the premium version, you know, P1, you know, lets you do some some hybrid management, some you know, utilize Microsoft Identity Manager, and so forth. But where we're going to kind of focus our conversation today are on some of those features that are provided with Azure Active Directory Premium P2, and you know, in particular, the Active Directory Identity Protection and um, you know, conditional access that, that is used as part of that. Another uh, feature which we're not going to talk about in this particular session, but maybe one down the road, is privileged identity management, which helps uh, kind of restrict you know, uh, different administrators and what services they have access to and giving them kind of a just-in-time management. It's a real you know, nice feature, but you know, we're not focusing on that one today. But what we are going to focus in on is Azure Active Directory Identity Protection. So you know, the top active or top attacks against Azure Active Directory, the top three attacks are, are basically you know, breach replay, password spray, and, and phishing. And some statistics around those is uh, so uh, in the breach replay, 4.6 billion attacker-driven sign-ins uh, sign detected and, uh, as of May you know, 2018. Some of these statistics statistics are a little bit old, but I you know, just wanted to make sure that you have some kind of sense as to, to what they are. Uh, password spray attacks, uh, 200,000 password spray attacks were blocked in August of 2018. And phishing, over 5 billion phishing emails were blocked in 2018 uh, in Office 365. So, yeah, that's... Uh, something that to, to, to be aware of and i think you know, there, there's you know every organization that one way or another has been affected by something here whether it be you know the, the breach replay the password spray or those phishing attacks phishing attacks probably being the the most common but the thing that they all have in common is that they are attacking the password and passwords indeed are the problem so what do we do and how can we protect ourselves uh, from somebody gaining access because of a, a, a password breach and so forth. And that's where Azure Identity Protection comes in. As I mentioned earlier, Azure Identity Protection is a feature of Azure AD Premium P2 licensing. So you do need to have that in order to do that. But what does Azure Active Directory Identity Protection do? It detects potential vulnerabilities affecting you know, the identities within your organization. Um, by you know providing you you know monitoring capabilities, reporting capabilities, and certainly alerting capabilities when uh, different uh, types of uh, potential attacks uh, come in, whether it's uh, uh, a, a detected you know, bad user sign in or uh, a login uh, type of uh, issue. So uh, what you can do within Azure Active Directory Identity Protection is you can actually configure automated responses to the different types of uh, suspicious actions there, and then. Uh, what you can do is then investigate the the, uh, the, suspicious, the suspicious incidents and take whatever actions that you feel are necessary in order to do that, whether it's locking out a specific account or whether it's um, taking uh, an account, forcing a user to change their password. Those are different things you can set up via uh, policy. So uh, what are the capabilities of, of Azure AD Identity Protection? Uh, we talked about, you know, you can detect uh, vulnerabilities and, and risking accounts. Um, what it does, it, it's using uh, behind the scenes you know, information that is collected both in the, the, the Microsoft security uh, intelligence uh, security graph, the intelligence graph back there that's, you know, kind of monitoring things that are going on all across uh, the Microsoft ecosystem, as well as different known uh, variables such as like bad IP addresses, uh, some bad players that are out there, um, different things that, that you know, the, the system is using intelligence wise at, at, to, to kind of identify um, what kind of sign-ins may be uh, coming into your system. So uh, for risk events, uh, you can you know, send certain notifications to administrators, to the actual user itself. You can investigate them. Um, 
you know, getting specific information as to, you know, when somebody signs in and what the issue was, uh, getting real you know, good details in there and, you know, providing some basic workflows to track those investigations. You can also provide, you know, easy access, remediation access, such as, you know, forcing somebody to change their password if something has been identified as uh, potentially um, bad with regards to their assignment. And we can set up, you know, specific policies within Azure Active Directory to force uh, these things and enforce specific actions uh, in order to do that. So out of the box, Azure Active Directory Identity Protection, you know, comes with uh, you know, three specific policies that you can take advantage of. One is the, the, the multi-factor authentication registration policy, and this is used to configure uh, MFA or multi-factor authentication, which is a method by, you know, you can verify somebody um, <clears throat> using a mechanism uh, that that's not just a password that there is a a second stage of authentication whether it, it be uh, responding to an email a phone call or even utilizing an app on your phone to verify your identity setting up a user risk policy which is an automated automated response which you can configure for a specific user risk level um, and you can block you know, access based upon that or require a password change and so forth and a sign-in risk policy, which is an automated response uh, for a specific uh, sign-in response that you can you can block access to your resources or require like you know, multi-factor authentication uh, to 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 gain access. And with that, what I'd like to do is actually now kind of jump into uh, the portal, the Azure portal, and kind of show you uh, what Azure I uh, AD Identity Protection uh, looks like. Hopefully you're all seeing my screen now. Uh, this is just a basic Azure portal, kind of out of the box. First thing I typically like to do, and if you are going to be utilizing Azure AD Identity Protection, is just to kind of add it into a, a favorite. And I'm just going to do that real quick here. And you can see Azure AD Identity Protection. If I just click this star, you can see it now. Uh, shows up as a favorite here. So I'm just going to click this. And this is the home page for Azure AD Identity Protection. And this is kind of an overview. Uh, being a demo tenant that I have set up, there's not a whole lot going on here. There's not uh, a lot of risky sign-ons, if any. Uh, definitely no users flagged for risk. But this is the, the, the reporting page where you will actually see um, the, the the actual events you'll get them by date you'll see uh whether uh, you, specific users have been flagged uh for for risk and and so forth different risk events and different vulnerabilities so you can see right now it's actually calling out the fact that you know, the, the the users in my demo tenant um are not set up for multi-factor authentication registration so it's kind of just saying that that is a vulnerability we talked about the fact that you can configure specific policies so right under here, under the configure section, you've got the MFA policies and you can set up multi-factor authentication policies uh, for users within here uh, by selecting group of users. And you can select uh, the type of uh, controls here, require Azure you know, multi-factor authentication. That's you know, the only thing you can kind of do here. We're gonna not set that. And you can review kind of the estimated, you know, what the impact is to the user community uh, with regards to that. From a user risk policy, uh, you can you know, select you know, whether this policy will go to all users and the conditions that are on here. And you can set these conditions based upon the risk level. And again, that risk level is assigned uh, kind of by Microsoft based upon, again, on that, that security intelligence graph that's there, as well as you know, other information. It utilizes you know, machine learning to kind of you know, I, uh, identify you know, the, those risks and assigning the level of risk uh, there. So you can set specific policies or, or conditions based upon that. Uh, the controls here, uh, you can allow access or blocked access. And again, we talked about for this particular one, if it is a high risk or a medium risk, whatever you decide uh, that risk level should be, you can actually require uh, a password change here by setting, yeah, this, uh, checking this particular box. We'll close this, not gonna have anything done. And again, you can kind of review the impact. And then for a sign and risk policy, same thing again, it's uh, specifically set you know, which users or which groups uh, that policy it is 
for my conditions, again, you got to select the, the risk level. We'll close that out. And then it controls, and it, you know, as we talked about earlier, you can allow access, but require that multi factor authentication, again, based upon that risk level uh, that you set. So those are the three, as we mentioned, out of the box uh, policies that you can utilize uh, within identity protection. You can set your alerts here, you can get reports, uh, and, and so forth. So this is, uh, you know, going back to, to that you know, home screen here, you get a lot of information here. And if you do have Azure Identity, uh, AD Identity Protection as part of your subscription, I highly recommend if you are not using it to, to go in, start taking a look at uh, these uh, features that you have available to you, begin to take advantage of them, begin to look at how you can potentially you know, lock down your, your system, look at those, you know, you, you, those risks. And when you do get those, you know, the, those risks, I, being able to identify them and uh, being able to um, take a look you know, much more deeply at, at them and assign policies accordingly. Let's go back to our deck. Now what we want to do is talk about another uh, feature of Azure Active Directory, and that is conditional access. So what is conditional access? Conditional access, it's a capability of Azure AD where you can implement automated access control decisions for accessing uh, your, your cloud applications, including Office 365, Azure, other cloud applications that are based on certain conditions. The access policies are enforced after that first, uh, first factor authentication has been completed. Therefore, you know, conditional access, it, it's not intended to be a first line of defense for scenarios like you know, denial of service attacks, but it can utilize signals from those events you know, with a sign on risk level, the location of the quest, and so on to determine access. Um, Azure AD conditional access provides you with you know, additional security when needed, but stays out of your user's way uh, when it's not. So here we have just a little graphic that kind of shows our user there on the left-hand side. And regardless of what type of um, form factor they're utilizing to, to come in, you can see you know, we've got a PC, we've got a tablet, a notebook, and a phone. Regardless of that, you know, we, we can set up specific uh, conditions uh, within Azure AD to uh, uh, set specific uh, types of actions that are required uh, for that conditional access. So we can set those conditions by user or by group for a specific cloud application, for a, a specific uh, device state um, or, or type of device, the location that somebody is coming in for, uh, from for you know, e even as granular as a specific IP address or a range of IP addresses, the client application that they're using, if they're using a desktop application or a browser-based application. And just like we have with the uh, identity protection, we can actually set conditions based upon that sign-in risk. And based upon these conditions, we can have specific actions. We can allow access in, into what the, tr the user is trying to get to, or we can enforce Microsoft, uh, or excuse me, multi-factor authentication uh, you know, by you know, per user or per app, or we can ultimately block access based upon you know, what we feel is, is you know, if the condition is not met. So different scenarios that we have in here, we talked about the sign-in risk, the network location. Again, you can set specific policies saying that you, know, you can have users have one conditional access policy for when they're on the corporate network, another for when they're outside the, net, the corporate network, and you can get as granular again, as I said, you know, even down to a single IP address. Uh, device management, you can set these conditional access policies, whether a user is coming in using uh, a laptop, a Mac, a PC, um, a phone, a tablet, et cetera. You can set these policies you know, using device management. Uh, conditional access in conjunction with Microsoft Intune, which is not part of this particular discussion, you can really get granular and, and set those policies even based upon the type of operating system you're, you're, you're coming in with. And different client applications as well, whether it be Office 365, uh, other SaaS applications, uh, different applications within uh, the, the, the Microsoft ecosystem. So a conditional access policy is, you know, kind of a, a definition of an access scenario using you know, the, the following pattern, you know, when something happens, then do this. So the, the when this happened is really, you know, the, the reason for triggering the policy. 
yeah, it's it's yeah a group of conditions that have been satisfied. The the two assignment conditions that, that you utilize are basically you know who's coming in and that's the the users and what you're trying to to, to get to your specific cloud app. And then you know if that's you know the conditions are, are set when this happens, then you want to do a specific thing. You're either going to grant the user access, you're going to uh, block them, you're going to require them to have MFA. Um, you know, in, in addition to these two mandatory conditions, you can have additional conditions that describe how the access uh, uh, attempt is performed. You know, common examples that I talked about, you can, you know, set specific uh, conditions for whether it's a mobile device or uh, if it's a location outside of your organization. So what I like to do now is kind of jump into a, uh, a demo and, and show you uh, conditional access as well. Let's go back in to our browser. I'm going to go back to the home page and again, just come over here. They have just Microsoft has just recently added this as an item that you can uh, favorite. So I will again favorite this and come into our uh, conditional access portal. One other area, and I could just show this here. If you just go to Azure Active Directory, you've got uh, different items down in the sub menus of Azure Active Directory. And if you scroll on down, uh, conditional access is listed here as well. So we'll just go back into conditional access. And just right out of the box, again, this is a clean uh, environment. You can see that there's a baseline policy that requires multi factor authentication for admins. So the, it, this policy just comes you know, out of the box uh, available to you, and then it's not something that is set. Uh, on or, or enabled right away, but it's something that you should definitely look at. So what I'm going to do is just create a, a real quick policy and just, just to kind of show you some of the features here. Let's just call this demo. You have the ability within a conditional access to set uh, uh, to include certain people or certain groups and exclude as well. For our demo purposes, we're going to select users. We're going to select the users and groups. And then here, because I select users and groups, I can actually select an individual user or in this particular case, I'm just gonna set uh, a group here. Get that group here, we'll just We got a security group set up for finance. Select that group. We're done. From a cloud app perspective, you can select all cloud apps or specific cloud apps. For our demo purposes, I kind of want to show you the different cloud apps that are available out here to set these policies for. Um, and in this, this particular one, I want when somebody comes in to check their email using a browser, uh, using uh, Office 365 Exchange Online, that's when I want this policy to kind of kick in. You can see a little warning here uh, that tells you by selecting Office 365 Exchange, you, you've got um, OneDrive available. Uh, the condition, you can do sign-in risk, device platform, locations, and this is where you set up like IP addresses, specific client apps, and device date. But for our particular uh, demo purposes, we want that anyone in that group that's coming in trying to get uh, get their mail is to have MFA required. We'll say select. We'll come back here. We're going to enable this policy and we've now created a policy. And just to show you kind of how it behaves, what I want to do is, is uh, come in here and just log in to mail. I will come in as Megan. Megan is a member of that particular group. And you can see now, Megan is now being prompted to add additional information because I already put in my ID, I put in the password, but we've set up multi-factor authentication for her to access mail. And now you'll have to go through the whole registration process for multi-factor authentication, which we're not covering in this, in this particular demo. 
So you can kind of see just how that that uh, policy was set up and how it could work. And again, I, I highly recommend that you guys take a look at uh, conditional access, conditional access policies, and how you can utilize those in your organization. So that's it for, uh, for that particular demo. Now I wanted to kind of talk about some things that that you know are, are out there now. You can take a start taking a look at today. Um, you may have heard of Microsoft Secure Score, which is uh, kind of being able to get the security. Uh, profile of how, how your organization is from a security perspective. And that's been in Office 365 now for, for you know, quite some time. Microsoft is now introducing something called the Identity Secure Score, where you can get a secure score strictly based upon how you're handling uh, identity management. So uh, you can see the URL there at the bottom, and this will take you to that. And real quick, I can just show you just in the, um, in the, the, uh, the Azure, uh, uh, um, portal. You can see it's right here, the identity score. It's listed as a preview. It is you know, still in preview mode, but it's still, it is something that you can uh, check out today. So coming back here, that's the, the secure, uh, identity secure score. And how can you kind of get started uh, with securing your uh, environment using Azure AD? Uh, first and foremost is strengthen your credentials. MFA you know, setting up MFA reduces 99.99% you know, .99 of those uh, compromised uh, password attacks where somebody's you know, credentials may have been stolen. And having that that second factor of authentication really, you know, puts the lock on the door to prevent somebody who has compromised credentials from getting in uh, to your system. Reduce your attack surface by blocking legacy authentication uh, types of systems. That's you know, old, old systems where you can't do MFA. Set up automate, automated threat responses. So with utilizing those risk policies and setting up responses such as, as we demonstrated or talked about, um, forcing somebody to change their password if potentially their, their credentials have been compromised or setting up MFA. Um, in, increase your awareness with auditing and monitor uh, your security alerts uh, within your diff, you know, different parts of Azure. You can set up uh, different alerts um, that come from Azure AD and uh, enable self-help to, to for more predictable uh, predictable and complete end user security so yeah just making people more aware of whether you know something that i've seen organizations do is kind of you know put out um uh, kind of a, a a monthly newsletter and then they always have you know kind of security tips and how to protect their their credentials and so forth so these are just some of the things that that you can do so this kind of wraps up our, our basic uh, part of our, our conversation and just a little bit about, you know, who we are, Windwire is a company that we are uh, just uh, 12 years old. We've got seven global offices, over 450 consultants uh, around the world uh, working in uh, different uh, industries and doing a, a lot of work. You can see some of the, uh, the awards we have won over the years and some of the services we provide, you know, Azure-based uh, solutions. You know, whether it's Azure Office 365, an area we're you know, really into now is you know, data and uh, artificial intelligence, uh, doing a lot of work in, in that space. Uh, as Azure is becoming more prevalent, companies are looking at, at application modernization, taking their applications, their legacy applications on premises, and seeing how they can be modernized to utilize cloud technologies, moving those to Azure. Certainly collaboration with SharePoint and Yammer, um, and you know, in particular Microsoft Teams now, as that's coming around and uh, building your know, mobile applications is another thing that we do. With that said, I appreciate everybody's attention, everybody's time, and uh, turn this over for uh, some questions. Nor so if we have any questions, please feel uh, free to send those along and see if I can get those answered. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, thanks for the uh, quick session as well as uh, the brief uh, demos, really interesting. Just I have a few questions. Uh, first coming from uh, Sean, uh, he's basically asking uh, on the license, I suppose, if I have an Office uh, 365 EFI subscription, do I get to access all these features of Azure AD? Yeah, if you have an E5 subscription, yes, you, you do get these. E5 comes with P2. Um, e, E3 comes with uh, yeah, the P1. But if you want to step up uh, to P2, you don't have to have E5. So if you have E3 and you want those features, you actually can buy the P2 SKU directly from Microsoft without having to step fully up to the E5 of Office 365. So P2 is available as its own uh, separate licensing, so you are not required to 
have um, either Microsoft 365 E5 or Office 365 E5? Good question. Thanks, uh, Sean. Hope that answers. In case if you have any additional uh, follow-up questions on that, you can send us an email at marketing at and we'll follow up on that. Uh, so one more question from Mark. Uh, he's basically asking on multi-factor authentic authentication. Uh, so with MFA, is it possible for us to control the phone number for the authentic for phone authentication, or the user needs to enter the number when registering for MFA? That's a good question. And again, um, this is actually something I had a client of mine actually ask. And the reason that that uh, I guess Mark's asking that that question um, is, yeah, and that a lot of people ask that is, if if credentials are compromised before somebody has an opportunity to set up their MFA, there is a potential for that bad actor who has that those credentials to put their own phone number in. Uh, to do that. So there is a way that you can actually pre-populate that phone number based upon uh, the the phone number that, that is in your uh, your Active Directory um, attributes. So if you've got a, a mobile number there, you can actually uh, do something to kind of pre-fill in uh, the mobile number uh, in, in, into the multi-factor authentication window um, and, yeah, and be able to do it to, to have that pre-populated. So therefore, if, if somebody does kind of capture those you know, credentials before MFA is is configured, that you can actually prevent them from putting their own phone number in. You'll pre-populate that with the user, user's actual phone number. So again, that's a good question. Actually, you know, that's something I had, had to work on with a, a client in particular. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, thanks for uh, taking up that question. I know we are over time. Uh, like we have a couple of more questions, but I think uh, in the interest of time, we will take uh, them offline. Again, I would like to thank everyone for taking time to join this session, and I hope you find it informative and useful. Uh, if you have any additional questions, you can write it to us at marketing at winwire.com or like using our Twitter handle, winwire, and we'll be more than happy to answer your questions on that. Uh, Jeff, thanks again for taking time and uh, putting uh, well, with the beautiful uh, informative session as well as a quick uh, demo on Azure AD. Thanks, Noor. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Bye-bye.